here in our patio garden at our studio, we try to add a lot of color and create a lot of interest with the plants that we choose when we design the garden. Now, we're fortunate in that this area is divided up into several small areas, so we can do different collections in different spots of this garden. Right here in this corner, we have sort of a xeric garden. It's made up of plants that can tolerate some dry conditions, and we have some plants that give us color from flowers and from foliage. Right here, we've got a perennial known as the Blue Fortune Agastache, and it gives us these lavender-colored flowers throughout the year, and it always attracts butterflies. In the fall, when the monarchs come through, this is one of their favorite plants. Well, another lavender-colored flower that we have in this bed is the Russian sage, one of the best perennials, I think, for Oklahoma. It blooms pretty much the entire growing season, and it is just a tough plant and a wonderful addition to any garden in Oklahoma. We've got down here in front of it some variegated mint leaf geranium, and we don't plant this plant for its flowers, we just enjoy the foliage. And it was neat to see a lot of this plant being used up in Bouchart Gardens in Vancouver last year when we were up there. Beautiful foliage plant, great complementary plant to some of these others. And then of course we've got the Mexican feather grass here, the very delicate leaves and flowering and seeding structures up here at the top. And when the wind blows, it gives us that motion in the garden. Very, very nice plant. Well, right over here in this spot, we can do something totally different, and we've got a little collection of plants here that take quite a bit more moisture. We've got the Silver Falls Dichondra right down here, making this little mat or carpeting effect, and coming up out of the center is the Black Magic Elephant Ear. So we've got quite a bit of contrast going on with these two plants. They contrast in a number of ways. The color, the size of the leaves, and just the shape or the form of the plant. They're very different from each other, so they sort of help show off each other. Right over here, we've got some of the sun coleus, and this is one that I like quite a bit. This one's known as Sedona. It's got that dark, rusty orange color, and we can keep these plants looking good by pinching them back. And right here, you can see that they're starting to flower a little bit. So we want to keep those flowers removed. These are still in the bud. So we can just nip it in the bud and just take those out and let more of those beautiful leaves be produced. Right down here, we've got another example of contrast with the purple flowers of the Angelonia. Great plant for the summer garden, the former Oklahoma Proven annual from a few years ago. Purple Angelonia, or purple or summer snapdragon as it's known occasionally. And then right back here we've got a beautiful silver foliage plant. This is Colchester White Centauria and it looks a lot more graceful than any Dusty Miller or little regular Dusty Miller bedding plants that we could use. Larger leaves, more intricately cut, very attractive. We've got some more of the variegated mint leaf geranium right here and just need to do a little bit of maintenance to this plant. As with every variegated plant, if you get a green sport showing up, you want to keep those removed. Just cut that out. You can see it doesn't have any of the variegation. You want to keep those removed from all of our variegated plants because if it continues to grow, you could potentially lose all of the variegation. Right up here, we've got one of the Carl Whitcomb created Crepe myrtles, the pink velour, just an outstanding flowering shrub. And of course, crepe myrtles are some of the best summer flowering shrubs for our Oklahoma landscapes. And Carl Whitcomb from right here in Stillwater, one of the premier crepe myrtle breeders in the world. Pink velour crepe myrtle. In the center bed we've got in the garden here, we've got something going on I think is really interesting. We've got sort of an airy look with uh, this diamond frost euphorbia. We grew this for the first time last year. We were just thrilled with it. We had to use it a little bit more this year, but you get a little bit of movement when the wind blows it. Another airy plant right beside here is the Moonbeam Coreopsis, this pale yellow color, and again, very open, very loose plant, and those together make a great combination. Then we've got some purple down here with the Swan River Daisy, another delicate little annual plant from Australia. 
And the pink fountain grass we've got here in the center, again, gives us that little bit of movement and that little bit of gracefulness in the garden. Well, we try to create a lot of contrast when we group our plants together in this garden to just kind of help show off the other plants around them. And one plant that we can get a lot of contrast with is this one. This is the sago palm or cycad, one of the cycads, a group of conifers that sort of look like palms. We take this into the greenhouse in the winter because it's not winter hardy. And finally, back here in the corner, I want to show you another one of our crepe myrtles in this garden. Always looks good every year. Burgundy cotton, outstanding flowers, and a little bit of purple in the foliage.